What are you doing over here, son? There's this bullet in here. A I want, bullet? I want to see what kind it is. It looks like a little 17. What's up, everybody? Blue Gabe. I'm back from Colorado, as you can tell. And we're actually going to skip the Colorado video right now. I got home late last night, and we're already back out here to hunting camp. Next weekend is deer season. And this weekend, we got to take care of some hogs because the hogs have taken over. They're running all of our deer off. So I've got a good friend of mine, Tom, who owns Blind 8 Charters. If way back when, almost two years ago, you saw my giant black grouper video, that was with him. Dude's a legend over there on the West Coast with grouper fishing. He knows how to catch the giants. But his wife's always wanted to come over and shoot a hog, and today is the day. Jake and I are here at camp just cleaning up. This is a new camp to us. Actually, if you follow along last year, all of our hog hunting videos were at Mr. Trevor's ranch just next door. All we had to do was move over. We didn't have to go very far. This is our little kitchen. Nothing fancy, it's just a hunting camp. That's a map of the place. Got us an outdoor refrigerator, a big fan. Right now I've got a bunch of these things lit for the mosquitoes because they are terrible. What is it? I don't know, it doesn't say. Looks like a little 17 HMR or something. It's nasty looking. Mm -hmm. We've got Jake's 6.5 Grendel with a crazy thermal imaging scope. We got Luke's 22 Magnum. We got my crossbow. You want to shoot him with a crossbow this afternoon or a rifle? I sort of want to shoot him with the crossbow and then once it gets dark we'll mess him up with the grendel. Did y'all just hear his plan? That boy is 12 years old and he just said, we'll shoot him with the crossbow until it gets dark and then we'll mess him up with the grendel. That is a great idea. So if you've never hunted Florida, it's not like many other states. Here we have tons and tons and tons of wild hogs. And if you let them overpopulate, they will. You won't have any deer because they'll run them all off. They'll run the turkeys off and they will eat all the acorns, all the corn out from underneath your feeders. It's not that we don't like the hogs. Somebody's calling me. Who is it, Tom? What's it say? Oh, Brad Gibson. Brad, I'm over here filming a YouTube video. I'll call you right back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bye. So anyhow, it's not that we don't like the hogs, we just gotta thin them out a little bit. I've had cameras set out on all these locations for the last two weeks, and about 400 yards that way, right over there, is a feeder, and there's so many huge hogs coming to it about two hours before dark, which is rare because most time hogs turn nocturnal. So I'm sending Tom and his wife over there, and Jake and I are going in the back, and we're looking for this big red, what we call a pited hog. It's red with a bunch of big black splotches all over it. We're going to try to kill it with the crossbow. Kelly's texting me. Trevor's texting me. Look, I mean, we just get home from elk hunting and look what Trevor... Oh, crap. Look what Trevor sends me. He just said, my buddy killed that in Wyoming. Mm, that's, that's messed up, Trevor. So, I did film in, in Colorado. I do have a video coming from Colorado. But this one's leapfrogging it. You're getting to watch me and Jake hog hunt at our new hunting camp after we get done cleaning it up, because it's a mess. It's been sitting here all summer long, been getting lots of rain, lots of bugs. Look who finally showed up late. Tell him what your day was. Uh, <laughs> where do I begin? <laughs> he blew a starter. We've had all kinds Water of problems. Home. Are you ready, Mama, or what? I'm ready, let's go. The mosquitoes are bad, but we have a thermosail, so we're gonna go take y'all to your stand with the GoPro, yep. and then Jake and I are hauling boogie, so. You know how to run a GoPro? Here's you, a camera and one extra battery. And it's not my fault if the mosquitoes eat y'all. Right, Are you ready? I'm ready? I'm gonna take them and go drop them off. Have your stuff ready. All right, time to get this party started, folks. It is 6.30, the feeders went off at six, so we're just doing what we gotta do. If we gotta kill one at night, we'll kill one at night with that brand new thermal. So we know this is going fast. This is a 
fast paced video thus far, but I promise you once we're done hunting tonight and all day tomorrow, we're gonna show you all kinds of cool places around this lease and show you why we put our sands where we do and wind directions and all of that. Right now though, Jake and I are hauling butt to our tree stand. We've got a southeast wind, so we've got to go way beyond the stand and walk back up to it. We've got Tom and his wife, Laura, set up. Ay, ay, ay. Y'all, I ain't stopped. I got home at, I think, midnight from Colorado, and it's 6 p.m. the next day, and I'm already two and a half hours away from home getting ready to go bust a hog with my son, Jake. I'm gonna show you right up here in just a second where we're going, and then I gotta be real quiet till we get to the tree. So I've got a really good stand right out there. But I've also got a really, really good one right over there. I don't know if you can see with the glare. Right there. But we've got to go way down, get the back side of it, and walk back up. Sound like a plan? Mm -hmm. The last time I was out here was a week and a half ago when it was bone dry. Now it's underwater. If we get a hurricane, this place is going to be really, really underwater too. It's, what's it about? Oh, it's 86 degrees right now with about 120 percent humidity it's hot so we're gonna get quiet we'll see you in the tree you see him we got in the tree two minutes before he walked out the second pin right on his shoulder. Hold on. Use the second pin. even. just here to get rid of that hog. I know the footage isn't great, but I'm doing what I can. That's a trophy. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at 
his teeth. Look at that. Jake, that's the biggest tooth hawk you've ever killed. Holy cow. Hey. Give me this. Give me this right here. Jake. You wrecked him. You crushed him. Look at that. Look at that. Put your finger up there next to that. No, move right to the side. Look at that. That's the size of my pointer finger. I got a mount in for you. One, two, three, go. His teeth are so big they got hung up on that vine. Come on. get all of our stuff and I'm gonna pull the truck right here bring it back here that's a freak holy cow never in a million years did I think that hog would come out that fast anybody that hog hunts out of tree stands much for the most part hogs are nocturnal I had a picture of this hog yesterday and the, the crazy thing is, is he wasn't eating corn. There's acorns falling right there. Acorns. And that's what he was eating. We hadn't been in that tree 30 seconds when I saw him. Tom and his wife are still hunting. Hopefully they get one, which I know they will. And if they don't, I'll break out the thermals later and we'll get one. I couldn't be more proud of Jake. That's the second time he shot that crossbow ever. The first time he smoked a big boar hug at 45 yards free-handed and that time he just smoked one at 30 yards with a rest and as you can see in the video the hog didn't take two steps if you're wondering how I'm gonna load them I'm about to show you luckily this ditch is right here Jake I'm proud of you son that was a good shot Here's got yeah oh that's nasty here. Hey, it's all over, but cleaning him now, folks. We're gonna get out of here because this is a really good tree stand. I have a picture of a huge buck coming here. We're gonna gather everything up and get the heck out of shape. Here, I got this. That's what I'm talking about. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Oh, my truck has more stuff in it than the wall house. I'm sorry for breathing heavy, folks. I'm whooped. Gently, son. Sometime my old son. Hopefully we don't get stuck coming out of here though. Big huge storm coming. Oh boy. Hey. I wish every hunt went like that. Yeah, like literally I thought we were gonna sit in there for a while. But like as soon as I got up and I like he handed me the crossbow, he was like right there. <laughs> hey, that was one of those it was almost too good to be true. I'm out here in this pasture beating around in this nasty mud with a brand new truck. Well, we'll see y'all at camp. Got a big hog in the pasture right here and Jake's gonna see if he can't take him out. Hold on, hold on. Listen to me, listen. Put it an inch above his head. You hit him. I don't know how you just hit him, but you did. Yeah, shoot him again. 
Shoot him again. Aim a little bit higher. No, he's dying. Hold on, he's coming at us. You hit him again. Shoot him again. He's going. Hold on, hold on. Goodness, son. Oh, Dead Eye McGee over here. You give Jake a gun and he'll shoot. Now we gotta go find that nasty joker in the dark. I'm telling you guys, this kid will shoot. That was, you hit that hog three or four times and that was all long shots. Holy moly. <laughs> He's doing exactly what I did growing up. Are we out of bullets? We need to get some more bullets in there. Y'all, the mosquitoes oh, no, are no good. joke whatsoever. Like, we're gonna give this hog some time and then probably come back after dark and find him with the thermal. That's the cool thing about the thermals. Turn them on, you'll go right to him. We got three more. Dude, the bugs are something serious. Let's pull up there and see if we can't find where he crossed the road. Yeah. I thought he was going to go down in that ditch. Yeah. Dude, that storm right there is nasty. You can't see it because of the trees. It's bad. How about my old moustache right here? I ain't shaved in about two weeks. I was in Colorado for like eight days. It's looking. Looking a little rough. I know about where he crossed. Somewhere right in here. You were dumping him, that's for sure. He was going right where you shot the hog too earlier. You see his tracks? I thought it was up here a little ways. Huh? Right here. Look for blood real good and I'm gonna look right here. I know he crossed this road. Maybe you're all right though. I saw him hit this ditch hard. Probably gonna have to wait to get the thermals. Right there is his running track. Right here. Doof. I'm pretty sure this is where he ran through right here. Right there is his running track. Yeah, see all the mud right here? Let me go get, stand right here so we don't lose this track. Y'all check that out. That big boar hog that Jake killed with his crossbow fits in this little bowl. <laughs> Listen, we tapped out last night. The mosquitoes got as bad as I've ever seen them in my life. We did end up though going and killing another huge hog with a thermal. And when we get done with dinner, I'm gonna take you back to the ranch and show you that hunt, as much of it as I can, because we filmed it with the thermal. And then we show you a lot more back at camp. I put the drone in the air. I show you all around the new lease, show you what style of woods they are. And tomorrow, when I drop the kids off at school and I come home and it's quiet, I want to go over Jake's crossbow, show you what it is, how we load it, and just go over details of what we're getting ready coming into deer season and hog hunting season. Everybody asks, why aren't you doing hog hunting videos? Well, reason being, our mosquitoes in South Florida are like that big. And right now, the new lease that we just got on, that's Mr. Trevor's, it rained like eight inches in the last week, which spawned a whole new generation of mosquitoes. Now this was a part of the tenderloin, the back strap, whatever you want to call it. Tom and his wife Chelsea took almost all the big bar and we have some of the boar hog and this is a little bit of the back strap. All I did was cut out the silver meat and this is just the little edible parts. It takes a little bit of time, it's tedious, but when you get it down to these little chunks, it's absolutely amazing. I'm gonna do this pork fried rice. Jake's watching me because I want him to start learning. I'm gonna do it in the order that I like to do it, the order that makes the most sense to me. 
that's just grease, normal grease, nothing crazy. I want to get it pretty hot. Just a little bit of Lowry's garlic salt. And in this wok, I got a tablespoon of sesame oil and about two tablespoons of olive oil. I want to get that piping hot. We're going to add zucchini and mushrooms. You got that? Mm -hmm. Which order are we doing today? The meat and that. What else do we got to make? The rice. And what else? An egg. You can't oh, have egg, yeah. pork fried rice with no egg. So the hunt, I, I do apologize that the hunt happened so fast. When Jake and I got out of the truck and we were walking to the sand, I did see a bunch of fresh tracks in the trail and I thought to myself deep down, I think I just cut the animals off. I think I parked where they're coming from and now I'm cutting them off. And when we got in the tree, I hadn't even thought about hunting yet. I was thinking about getting Jake comfortable, getting the crossbow comfortable. I look up and the hog's standing there eating acorns. Like it couldn't happen any better. Jake made a phenomenal shot. I think, what was it, 30 yards? Oh, it was hit the... The second pin. Yeah, 30. So the crossbow has a scope on it and has dots inside. The first one's 20 yards, second one's 30, and so on. And I ranged it with filming, told him it was 30, and he devastated that thing. Chelsea de devastates hers with the thermal too, but you're gonna have to wait to see that. When you are making this dish, you want to cut this pork, especially wild pork, into little small chunks so you're not sitting there choking on it. Especially the back strap, because it can be pretty tough. We'll let all this cook. We're going to get some of Kelly's farm rib eggs. She's back from Boston and Key West. We're sort of done traveling for a little while, I think. I think we're going to make a bunch of videos here at home. And just get back to the basics. Hunting camp's here. The kids are in school. Jake got to play hooky yesterday. Yesterday was Monday. I got home. No, today's Monday. Yesterday was Sunday. I got home from Colorado at midnight. Slept till 7 o'clock in the morning. Went and picked Jake up from his mom's. Drove straight to the hunt lease. And got home this morning. And we'd probably still be out there, but those mosquitoes were bad. Yeah. Man, that smells good. So the pork is already almost done and hadn't even done it about a couple minutes. Yeah, I like how small you cut it. Yeah. I want to take this out, put it in the bowl. Now, if you're a gravy person or like a roux, whatever you want to call it, the stuff that's in that pan right there, add a couple tablespoons of flour, some milk, some black pepper. You got yourself something there. Turn that off. Once I get these going really good and they start to get that little bit of crunch on them, I'm going to add the pork. I'm telling you one thing guys, all this aroma coming from that pan, the pork, these eggs, it's got me hungry. Now don't get disappointed about Colorado, I have some footage coming from Colorado, maybe not as good as I would have wanted. It was super hot, the bulls weren't bugling very well. But we did get a video done there. And if you're new to this channel and don't know, I went to Colorado last week elk hunting. I don't think I said that at the beginning of this video. I'm going to take the eggs and put them right here in the pan with the pork, in the bowl with the pork. Because the next step's ready. Jake, come over here and dump that rice in here. But will the rice make it into the bowl? Go ahead, just dump it in. There we go. That's plenty. Uh, yeah, that's good right there. Now that rice will soak up any of those juices, and it will all, like deer meat for dinner would say, fall low. Now I want to add the pork and the eggs. This is also a really cool dish if you're somebody who works and take your lunch to work. I mean, if you're a single dude, this right here would last you three or four days. It's healthy. It's dang sure. 
Good. That's what I did. I used to live off fried rice. I'm I need it for a week. I'm gonna take a little bit of garlic. Stir that up. And it's literally that simple. We just took a wild hog, maybe two cups of the meat, and made a dish like this could serve at least five or six people. Mm -hmm. And take a little bit of soy sauce. You know what's really good on this dish, Jake? Honey. Honey? Yeah. Oh yeah. Makes it a little sweet. Mm -mm -mm. When you're as sweet as me, you don't need anything else. Soy sauce is the best one. Y'all smell that? Smells delicious. That's the second animal Jake's killed with that crossbow, and both of them, he absolutely devastated it. Meanwhile, Kelly and I bought the crossbows and haven't killed anything with it yet. I'm never touching a crossbow. It's a nice bow. A little bit of sesame seeds on top. Jake said, I'll quote Jake, he said, it's just like a gun, but quiet. Yeah. Look at that. No need to worry about your protection or anything. Just take it up and shoot. Woo. All right, Luke, come eat. Thank you, dear God, for this day. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for keeping us safe while we were at hunting camp and hunting. Thank you for allowing us to be able to get those hogs. Please help this food nourish our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we get an amen? Amen. What, can we talk about your clothes? Hmm. Dinosaurs and plaid. What are you doing with the honey? You were being serious? Yeah, you did a little drizzle. Just a little drizzle. We're kind of running out, but... Well, it makes That's it... that long gan honey. Mm-hmm. What's it taste like, Jake? I'm try it. Luke? Mm. Is it good? Hot. Can we get a verdict real quick? I kind of don't taste like the... Like, like the vegetables oh, and like... The... Like, you like the eggs. All I taste is like the deer meat and like the rice. It's gonna be salty. All right, let's try it. Jake, all you're gonna taste is soy sauce. <laughs> he might, was a little heavy handed. That's the best part. We worked hard for that hog. Mm. That's the perfect amount of soy sauce. So when we got back to camp last night after killing both hogs, we hung them up and cleaned them. I know some of you enjoy watching those style videos, but in, on my channel, I'm just not gonna risk it anymore. I do though think I'm gonna start making those videos and putting them up, just not monetizing them. At this day and age, I can't risk my channel getting a strike. I can't risk getting taken down. YouTube doesn't like it. But I did daydream about it on the way home today. I think I can make full cleaning videos and just not monetize them. But what that means, YouTube's not gonna send it to very many people. It's not going to get pushed around very much. So if you want to see it, you actually have to search for it. And that is the one problem with us YouTubers with not monetizing videos. I think YouTube pretty much thinks to themselves, well, if they're not monetizing it, we're not making money off of it. They're not making money off of it. So we're not going to push it. But for you guys, I will make some how to cleaning hog videos. And if I'm not monetizing it, I'm going to show you every ounce of it, all the details and just let it ride for those of y'all that do want to watch to learn. Um, Jake's starting to learn. He's starting to show a lot more interest in it. He stood out there all night last night with us in the mosquitoes and paid attention to what we were doing. We actually caped his hog out, which means we got it ready to mount. And I dropped it off in Okeechobee today to one of my good friends, Newt Matson. He's going to mount it for Jake and that's that. I'm going to get these kids to bed and tomorrow morning I'll go over some of our gear that we used and talk a little bit more about the lease. So I promised you a gear rundown. This is our whatever 10 point crossbow i have no affiliation with them they're super fast and they're awesome for kids and adults because they allow you to sit there with more confidence and using like a typical bow like what i've used my whole life especially with jake he can't pull back yet because he's only 12 a strong enough bow that will kill a big boar hog like that so you see i just clicked it down the cool thing about all these new crossbows is you can just stop. You can crank, stop, crank, oh, you can let it down. Or you can just keep going. Once I get it cocked, I take this cool little thing right here, put it underneath, and now it's in place. It's on safety. I'm gonna grab an arrow. A lot of times when you're shooting these crossbows with practice tips, they'll rattle loose a little bit. So you can see the fletchings. Two are yellow, one's white. You take the white one and place it in the little crack 
And key point is, is you gotta make sure it's all the way in place. So now before you get ready to shoot, here's the safety. It's on safety now, now it's on fire. All right, Jake, show them how to do it. Top right. pin, 20 yards. Shoot the hog or the squares? Shoot the square, shoot the center square. Take your time. Always want to keep your hands away from these wings. Yeah, you see the wings, what he's talking about? You hear me mention it in the tree stand that he might have hit the tree stand with these. So right now they're tucked in. When he shoots, they're going to come out a little bit. So you got you can't have anything close to them. Oh my gosh, that was fast. Dude, those things are crazy fast now Luke is seven he's never shot one I just a second ago put him on this tripod and let him look through it watch how easy this is so the crossbow is loaded and ready to go come on Luke now Luke did kill him a turkey this year in Nebraska so he's used to looking through a scope because he's got a little red dot take your finger off the trigger you got to put it on fire now ease take your time put it on the center square the top dot Shoot when you're ready. He killed oh. a reindeer. <laughs> no. Look the at reindeer. the show. Go show him the shot. Were you aiming at the reindeer or the black? Luke. I was, I was aiming right at that. You were aiming right at the reindeer. Let me explain something to you. He would have destroyed that reindeer. Like, come here. Let, let the camera see. You could not put an arrow any better than that. And then we got this one. I don't know if we're getting this one back. It yeah, is. we're definitely not getting one yeah. back. So. I don't care what brand crossbow you you get. Do your homework. I said already, I have no affiliation with them. Yeah. Never even talked to the company. I just bought it. And what made me buy it was Kelly was coming to Indiana last year deer hunting with us. And she's not even pulling back a heavy poundage bow yet. So I bought her one of these. So if she does shoot a 300 pound whitetail, it will definitely go all the way through the animal and won't wound him. Well, she ended up not seeing the deer. So we brought him home and just let the kids shoot hogs with him. And, this year we're gonna shoot deer with him. That's a cool little dude right there. Yeah, all the way through. Luke, high five. Yeah. Now I know I can take an eight year old to the tree stand. Is he eight or seven? Seven. 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 Now I know I can take a seven year old to the tree stand out to 80 yards and he will absolutely devastate anything he shoots at. If he was bow hunting, look, he just found a set of shed antlers. <laughs> if he was bow hunting, I would. he probably wouldn't be able to bow hunt until he's like, 12 and even then it's hard to get the right poundage to shoot a big boar hog like what jake just killed golly yeah these arrows like if i was to shoot this with my 70 pound hoi i could get it right out the arrows are thicker too golly sticking out the other end all right we're gonna have to get some rags or something anyhow get you a crossbow they're absolutely awesome so while we try to get these arrows out, let's take it back to camp and I'm going to show you Chelsea's hog hunt through the thermal on Jake's new Grendel. Then once we shoot the hog, I'll show you just how big he is. Alright, it's on fire. Shoot off my shoulder. Bring the buggy. I got this, come on. Shoulders. Are you filming? Yeah, I'm filming. Oh, dang it. Why didn't you tell me you're filming? <laughs> she Mama whacked him. Mama busted one of Sitting right there. Yep. She laid it down. I heard that fat. <laughs> wow. Jake, what you say? Jake's like, oh, that's the hit. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Oh, big, big bar down. Except for it's on the other side of the ditch. We gotta drive over there to it. He's got some teeth 
on him too. All right, so I told you I'd give you a full gear rundown and I never do these. So you've already seen the crossbow. This is Jake's 6.5 Grindle with a Pulsar scope. It's got a built-in rangefinder. It's a thermal imaging scope. And to be honest with you, I couldn't be any more disappointed with it. It's a super expensive scope. I did my homework. I, I waited months before I actually bought one and I did a a lot of research on the internet and everybody told me that this scope for the money, it's a $6,000 scope. They're like, this is the best you can get. Well, after watching the footage that you guys have already seen, like I'm speechless, it's terrible. I know right here is a focusing button that when you put it on the animal or you're just looking around and if it gets blurry, you push this one time, it blinks and it focuses in. But as you can see in the footage, this scope for $6,000 put out the worst footage I think I've ever seen. I know Dalton and Benel has a scope that's like a thousand bucks and the footage was even better than this. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I'm probably going to call Pulsar and ask them what the heck because it's absolutely terrible. I love this gun though and I'm going to show you the rounds compared to some other rounds. So this is the Grendel bullet right here. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor. Look at the difference. This little Grendel is super, super fast. Now this is a 25 WSSM. This is what I deer hunt with and my go-to rifle. It's about the same bullet, but much fatter and just a little bit bigger. But the Grendel actually has a little bit more lead to it. Then we can come down here to 22s. So this is the 22 Magnum that you saw Jake shooting out of the truck with. I love this round. This is a 22 long. Look at the difference. This thing's got some oomph. And the hog that Jake was shooting out of the truck, we went back and found it later. But like I said earlier, I'm not going to show a ton of that in this video. I don't want it to get demonetized. I'll make some videos in the future and just show you us letting it rip. So another comparison, this is a 9mm and this is the 22 Magnum. Check that out. Here is the 22 Magnum compared to the 6.5 Creedmoor. Look at that. I love this little round. You know, this is a 410 shotgun. Look at that. I'll compare it to my 25. I know in this day and age, a lot of people have mixed emotions on guns. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. This gun's open right now. It's completely safe. It doesn't have any bullets in it. This weapon can not kill anything or anyone without a person behind it. You can't blame the gun any more than you can blame the car for killing somebody. Had Somebody had to be behind the wheel. Um, I think if you raise your kids, I know I have a seven year old and a 12 year old and these kids live around guns, crossbows. I have rifles all around, pistols all around and neither one of my kids or any of their friends have ever even looked at them because they know if they want to shoot them, all they got to do is say, dad, let's go shoot. I don't have them in locked up areas. I do have some in the safe, but some are just stashed around the house and I know my kids aren't going to pick them up. They, they were raised around them. It's sort of like anything else, your kids are raised around it. They're not so quick to want to go do it. They just, dad, let's go shoot and we'll go shoot. So that's it for this video. It's sort of different. We've shown you a little bit of camp. I'm going to go back. I think we're going to go back this weekend and actually show you a lot more of camp. It's 3000 acres. It's got a lot of oak flats and palmetto flats and wide open pastures and beautiful camp and I can't thank Mr. Trevor Roberts enough for allowing us to be able to come out there and be a part of that. Mr. Brett Dubois, it's just an all-around cool deal. Kelly will be able to hunt the boys, my dad. Right now though, me and my dad and a buddy of ours, Mike from South Carolina, are going fishing. So this video is ended. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you want to see more of this, leave a comment below and I'll show you some more of it. Right now though, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here. Get the heck out of shape. See y'all.